welcome to Facebook Live at the Fort Worth Zoo. My name is Crystal. I'm an interpretive specialist here at the zoo, which means not only do I love animals, but I love to talk about them. So uh, without any further ado, we're going to introduce you to our Texas horn lizards that we have here at the Fort Worth Zoo. We are behind the scenes at the Texas Native Reptile Center. These are our very special residents that we have here at the zoo. I'm here with Jamie, who's their keeper, and we're going to tell you all things a horn lizard. So te Texas horn lizards are a very important part of many people's childhoods. Here in Texas, many people have spent their childhood chasing and catching these iconic creatures. In fact, in Texas, they're known as the horny toad or the horn frog. However, they are neither a toad nor a frog. As a matter of fact, they are a reptile. Toads and frogs are amphibians. They need moist environment to survive and their skin is very soft and porous. Uh, they also start out in a larval stage in the water and look nothing like the adults. Reptiles like the horn lizard here have very bony scales which help hold in moisture and when they hatch, they look very much like the adults. The Texas horn lizard is found throughout the South Central United States and into Northern Mexico. It requires arid to semi-arid environments with open ground and very sparse plants. And plants like cacti, uh, mesquite trees, and other small shrubs would be found in this area. You would find the Texas horn lizard out during this part of the day and uh, other parts of the evening, warming its body up. Its round body allows for maximum surface area so that it can get warm and be active. During the hottest parts of the day and during the evenings, it's gonna be found underground and under rocks, regulating its body temperature and protecting itself from predators. Fragmentation and loss of this habitat has contributed to the decline in the population numbers that we see today. Now the Texas horn lizard is extremely important to us because it is a large consumer of insects. In fact, almost 70% of its diet is, considered, is harvester ants. One horn lizard can eat between 70 and 100 harvester ants in a day. The introduction of red fire ants, which eat the harvester ants, and pesticides has declined the numbers of harvester ants, which has also declined the numbers of horn lizards because they have fewer sources of food for them to eat. Now, because of the fact that these guys are declining in numbers, we have a breeding and reintroduction program here at the zoo. So I'm gonna let Jamie explain how she cares for these guys here at the zoo. Hi everyone. So here at the Fort Worth Zoo, we are home to over 50 horn lizards. And each and every day, the horn lizards are examined to make sure they are healthy and thriving. And as you can see, there are some crickets running around our enclosures here. So like Crystal said, the horn lizards main diet is harvester ants, but they do consume other insects uh, such as crickets, wax worms, uh, mealworms, termites. Um, anything, any other small insects that might come across their path uh, while they are out in the wild. Our horn lizards here at the Fort Worth Zoo are currently in their breeding pair. So you might see uh, there are black dividers between our horn lizards and that just keeps our animals uh, in their little cohorts uh, for the breeding season. So each and every day our horn lizards are misted to ensure that they stay hydrated. Horn lizards do have this cool aspect to them. Um, they have capillary action. So if they get water on their backs, it can actually move all the way up uh, and reach their mouths. And that water movement uh, is called capillary action. So even the smallest mist of water can make it all the way up to their mouth. Thank you, Jamie. And thanks for all your hard work here caring for the horn lizard. So horn lizards have a number of adaptations which help protect themselves against predators. The most well known is the fact that they can shoot blood out of their eyes. Now that's a great defense mechanism for an animal such as a coyote or a fox, but it is not a great defense mechanism for the other animals that might want to eat horn lizards. In fact, horn lizards best defense is to sit very still and to use its body to camouflage against its environment. And that is the best way to protect itself from an animal such as a hawk. However, other predators that might be going after these guys, such as the diamondback rattlesnake, are an ambush type predator. So the best way to get rid of them is to sprint really fast and stop, and then sprint really fast and stop. The scurrying is a great defense mechanism against those guys. 
Other ways that they might protect themselves is to simply fight back. These guys will get very low, they'll open their mouth, they'll use their horns, they'll hiss, they'll even bite the predator. Now if all else fails, filling that thorny body up with air and making it look like they're too big to swallow is a great defense mechanism also. In fact, many scientists have found these guys uh, leaving thorns or leaving holes in the, the esophagus and the stomach of predators. Common predators of these guys would be the coyote, the fox, hawks, snakes, and even roadrunners. From October to March, these guys are in hibernation. So they're gonna be underground and they're also gonna be in leaf litter, hibernating. Now here at the zoo, we do hibernate them and I'm gonna let Jamie explain that process to you guys. So here at the Fort Worth Zoo, we do mimic the horn lizard's natural behaviors out in the wild. As you can see, they are in these outdoor enclosures, uh, which allow the horn lizards to get the sunlight from their native habitat here in Texas. Um, so during October, they do start to slow down. Currently, they eat about three times per day in the morning, afternoon, and evening. Uh, but during October, they do start to slow down and they can sense the temperature drops. So when they do start to slow down, they will bury uh, and, and slowly stop eating. Um, when that starts to happen, uh, we do have a restaurant style walk-in cooler uh, where we will put the horn lizards for the remainder of the hibernation season. And we do this because the temperature can change so much in Texas uh, that we want to keep them at a constant temperature to make sure they stay uh, sleeping during their hibernation period. Now each individual animal does get its own enclosure for the hibernation period. And it is a small critter keeper and it is lined uh, with sand and then a weed block and then some uh, moss right here and then some pea gravel at the bottom. And the reason for that is because we do mist our horn lizards to make sure they stay hydrated through hibernation as well. Uh, so when we mist, it needs this small drainage layer uh, and the moss will help to keep it hydrated for much longer. Now, when the horn lizards start to wake up in the spring, uh, we do slowly raise the temperature of the cooler and they start to wake up slowly on their own. Before they come outside, we do make sure the temperature here in Texas uh, is warm enough for them to thrive and start eating. Since they are ectotherms, they depend on the natural environment to warm their bodies. So if it's not warm enough here in Texas, uh, we do keep them inside under their heat lamps until it's time to move them outside. Thank you, Jamie. After hibernation, we begin mating season. These guys are active for a very small portion of the year, so they have no time to waste. In fact, mating season starts anywhere from mid-April and continues in through June. Males let the females know that they're interested by bobbing their heads. Females that aren't interested will either move away from the male or wave their tail. If a female is interested and does mate with the male, then about two to three weeks after mating, she will dig her own hole to put those eggs in. Anywhere from 13 to 37 eggs have been reported in a clutch. We average around 13 here at the zoo. They also will layer them in groups of 10 to 11. Once the female is done with the hole, she will fill in the hole and make it look like nothing happened and she leaves. These guys are on their own once they hatch in about three months. Eggs are commonly eaten by rodents and the little ones are commonly eaten by fire ants and birds. So you can see why it's hard for the population numbers to bounce back. Here at the zoo, we have a breeding and reintroduction program. We are teamed with Texas Parks and Wildlife. Uh, this project is headed by Diane Barber, our curator of ectotherms, and Vicki Poole, our assistant curator of ectotherms. In fact, v Vicki Poole is our species survival plan stud book keeper. Species Survival Plan is a program that we have through our zoos and conservation programs that ensures genetically diverse and stable populations throughout the zoo and throughout the reintroduction program. This stud book just does, does just that. The study not only develops methodologies for introducing the Texas horn lizard back to its environment, but also to set the standard at, for the other 12 species of horn lizard found throughout the United States and Texas throughout the United States and Mexico. I'm gonna turn it over to Jamie and let her explain how they reintroduce these guys into the wild. So like Crystal said, we are partnered with Texas Parks and Wildlife. And here at the Fort Worth Zoo, uh, like I said, they are in their breeding pairs currently. 
So once their eggs are laid, we do incubate them in order to maximize the amount of hatchlings coming out of those eggs. And we do head start them. So the point of our program is to head start our horn lizards so that way they are able to thrive in the wild. So head starting is essentially once they hatch, uh, we'll feed them, make sure they're growing and thriving, and then we'll release them into the wild rather than releasing them immediately after they hatch out of their egg. Now Texas Parks and Wildlife does determine where our horn lizards are released and we are currently releasing in wildlife management areas, specifically in Mason Mountain. So our Texas Parks and Wildlife biologists will find a habitat for these animals to be released and what they're looking for uh, is presence of already, um, already living horn lizards. They're also looking for habitat that's good for them. They're looking for food sources. Um, and here at the Fort Worth Zoo, we started our program in 2005. And since then, we have hatched out over 650 horn lizards. And we have released over 300 horn lizards since 2011. So our program is doing really great. And we thank Texas Parks and Wildlife for helping us along the way. So along with breeding reintroduction and setting standards along with Texas Parks and Wildlife for a reintroduction of the horn lizard, we're also sharing this information with zoos throughout the state so that we can increase the chances of returning the horn lizard back to its habitat. So I know you guys have a lot of questions for me and Jamie about the Texas horn lizard and our conservation program. So we are going to open it up for any questions that you have right now. So is it really blood that squirts from their eyes? Yes, it is. And how exactly do they do it? Do you want to? So the horn lizards can actually block the flow of blood to certain parts of their body. Um, and the small veins, the small capillaries in their eyes will fill with blood and one will burst and it can shoot pretty directly uh, in the direction of their predator. And how can you tell the difference between male and females? That is a great question. So males, do have reproductive organs at the base of their tail. So if you look at these two horn lizards, this one right here is a male. If you look at the base of his tail, he does have these two bulges right here at the bottom. And if you look at this female, she does not have those two bulges. Another way is if you look at this male, he does have these, these are called femoral pores. And they're also used to scent uh, for breeding purposes. So a male will have those as well. And about how big do horn lizards get? Just about what you see here in this, these are all adults in here, so this is about as big as they get. And how big are the babies when they're born? They're probably about the size of a penny. When they hatch out, uh, they weigh either a gram or less. They're very small. And what is their life expectancy? In a zoo, they're about seven years. As there's actually been one recorded to be eight years and 11 months. However, in the wild, it is really unknown as to how long that they can live. And um, what is it that they're eating right now? They are currently chasing around crickets. Um, but if you look at the feeder right here in front of you, those are the harvester ants uh, that make up the majority of their diets. But as they're running around and chasing things, uh, that is the crickets that they are eating. And um, how many different kind of species are, uh, exist for the horn lizard? It's about 13 to 14 different species, depending on how you define species. Some of them are defined as subspecies and some of them are defined as species. And are they all found here in Texas? Not all of them. And um, how can we tell that it's a horn lizard and not another kind of lizard? So Texas horn lizards, do have these two prominent horns right on the top of their heads. If you find a different species of horn lizard, uh, they may have a different looking crown. So it's pretty much the shape of the head uh, and the horns that they have. They also have these two horns right behind their eyes. And what should we do if we encounter one in the wild? Just leave it alone and let it uh, exist. These guys are uh, threatened in Texas, so we want to, as many to exist in the environment as possible. And how long does it take for um, a hatchling to reach full size? About two years. And um, 
what kind of things will they eat in the wild and what kind of things may eat them? So well, they will eat spiders, they will eat harvester ants, they will eat other insects that they come along with, crickets. Um, anything that doesn't eat them, well, they will eat. Uh, things that they would, would eat them would be a coyote, a fox, hawk, snakes, and roadrunners are also well known for eating these guys. And what kind of um, habitats are we most likely to find them in the wild? What kind of land? They prefer arid to semi-arid environments with like open ground and very little vegetation. They like to be able to run and hide and their bodies aren't made to be able to sprint very fast. So they need to be able to get to one space to another very quickly. And what kind of parents are horn lizards? There's no parental care with horn lizards. When the babies hatch, they are pretty much on their own. And how many eggs do they lay at once? Anywhere from 13 to 37 have been reported in a clutch. And how many um, eggs have hatched at the Fort Worth Zoo? We have currently hatched over th uh, 650 eggs here at the Fort Worth Zoo. Last year we hit our 600th hatchling. And how many are currently here at the zoo? Currently we house over 50 horn lizards in these outdoor enclosures. And um, how do they communicate with one another? They do through mostly through body postures and head bobbing. They have speech, each horn lizard species has its own species specific way of head bobbing. How fast do they run? Nobody has actually ever clocked a, t a horn lizard. They scurry, so they will run really quickly and then they stop. So I know that there are um, these horn lizards behind the scenes, but are there any on exhibit that people can see at the zoo? We actually do have an exhibit in the mountains and deserts area and the mountains and deserts building in the Texas area of the zoo. However, due to the nature of a horn lizard, the, due to the fact that they spend part of their day buried and they spend most of their year in hibernation, you may not always see them on exhibit. Do they ever lose their tails? So that's a great question. A lot of lizard species will drop their tails as a defense but these guys have so many other defenses, their tail doesn't readily fall off like another species of lizard. So if they lose their tail, uh, it does not grow back. And are they good um, jumpers and good climbers? No, uh, they pretty much run along. Uh, they, they will climb on small things like you see in here, but they're not gonna climb very high. And how long do they hibernate? For about six to six and a half months. And what time of year? Usually from October to mid-March is when you're going to see them hibernating underground. And um, when is their breeding season and do they breed more than once? That is a great question. And their breeding season is from April, about mid, the middle part of April, all the way in through June. Females can double clutch. But a lot of times there's only going to have one clutch. And um, how can you tell all 50 horn lizards apart here at the zoo? So they have various different markings on them to, so that the keepers can tell them apart. But um, that's just so that we can tell just the different individuals apart and we can also keep their gene pool as diverse as possible through our species survival plan stud book. So there are not um, 50 names that no, you guys there have? there are not. Okay. <laughs> and, um, are these guys endangered? So through IUCN, the International Union of Nature, um, their uh, network, it says that they are least concerned. However, in Texas, Texas Parks and Wildlife considers them threatened. And again, what should we do if we find one in the wild? Do we um, report it to somebody? Well, we prefer you leave it alone, um, but you can also report it to Texas Parks and Wildlife and they will um, help you if you have any concerns about your Texas horn lizard. And how is the zoo involved in conservation with these guys? So we currently have a breeding and reintroduction program that is headed by uh, Diane Barber, our curator of ectotherms, and Vicki Poole, our assistant curator of ectotherms. We are partnered with Texas Parks and Wildlife, and Texas Parks and Wildlife determines where in Texas these guys are released. And um, can they swim? They actually float, so these guys are soaked 
uh, twice per week, like I said, just to keep them hydrated. And when you put them in water, they actually float. They're like little bobbers. Do um, the males and females have a difference in coloration? Um, not really. The coloration you see is mostly based on location that they are found. So they tend to mimic their environment. Um, if you see, the Texas horn lizard does have this white stripe down the middle of their back. And that's actually to mimic a type of grass that's found in their environment. And if uh, the horn lizard that I was holding earlier was a little browner, and this one is more gray, so they mimic the sand um, that they, from the locality that they come from. And do they hatch from eggs? They do. So Texas horn lizards are an egg laying species, but there are certain species of horn lizards that do uh, give live birth. But here at the Fort Worth Zoo, our horn lizards do lay eggs and they hatch out of eggs. And do horn lizards have teeth and will they bite? So horn lizards do have teeth, but like I said about um, the tails, they have a lot of other defense mechanisms, so they don't usually bite. Uh, their teeth are actually a lot shorter um, because they don't actually use them to chew either. They, when they eat their food, uh, they use their sticky tongues and they will eat the ant um, and, and swallow it. And last question, um, when did the uh, releases back into the wild take place at the zoo? That is also all dependent on Texas Parks and Wildlife, but recently in the past few years they have been around September and the eggs will hatch um, around August. So that gives us about a month to head start um, our horn lizard hatchlings in order to make sure they thrive out in the wild. So we've talked a lot about how horn lizards require a specific environment and a specific diet. So that is part of their habitat and in the habitat there's a things that are required for an animal to be able to survive, such as food, water, and shelter. So what we're gonna do is challenge you guys to look throughout your neighborhood and find these items, such food, water, and shelter for the various different animals in your neighborhood. And also hashtag us and send, and, uh, send it in for us to see. All right, well Jamie and I thank you for coming in and learning about the horn lizards here at the zoo. Until next time, we hope you have a wonderful day.